I'm Joe Aldenendi, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find close to 800 posts, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, a nurse practitioner, we're the New York Times and Amazon best-selling authors of the Survival Medicine Handbook and other books, plus the designers of the awesome board game Doom and Bloom Survival, named by the Prepared Family blog as the Teaching Preparedness Resource of the Week. You might have seen our video on snake bite, but in a survival scenario, and really everyday life, you'll see a million insects for every snake. So many, indeed, that you can expect to regularly get bitten by them. Insect bites usually cause pain with local redness, itching, and swelling, but are rarely life-threatening, although some fleas and mosquitoes can transmit some pretty nasty diseases. This time we'll talk about spider bites, and for a very specific reason. My lovely wife, Nurse Amy, has what we suspect is a brown recluse bite. As you know, we are big on gardening, and Amy spends a lot of time putting her green thumb to work growing some food. Those eggplants from her last gardening video were delicious, by the way. <laughs> well, there are bugs in any garden, and wouldn't you know it, Amy got bitten by something. It started off as a blister, but then eroded the skin before stabilizing. It's now slowly healing. Although large spiders such as tarantulas cause painful bites, most spider bites don't even break the skin. In temperate climates, two spiders are to be especially feared, the black widow and the brown recluse. Today we're talking about the brown recluse. The brown recluse spider is well, brown, and has legs about an inch long. Unlike most spiders, it only has six eyes instead of eight, but they're so small it's difficult to identify them from this characteristic. Victims of brown recluse bites report them to be painless at first, but then may experience these symptoms. Itching, pain, sometimes severe after several hours, fever, nausea and vomiting, and like my wife Amy, blisters. The venom of the brown recluse is thought to be more potent than a rattlesnake's, although much less is injected in its bite. Substances in the venom disrupt soft tissue, which leads to local breakdown of blood vessels, skin, and fat. This process, seen in severe cases, leads to necrosis, or death of tissues immediately surrounding the bite. Areas affected may be quite extensive. Matter of fact, the same venom that acts to liquefy an insect's innards for spider consumption, causes the flesh rotting effect in human wounds. A common appearance of a brown recluse bite is the formation of a reddish blister, surrounded by a bluish area with a narrow whitish separation between the red and blue, giving a sort of a bullseye pattern. In some people, however, very little effect is noted, or the appearance could be really quite variable. Once bitten, the human body activates its immune system as a result. Immune reactions can go haywire, destroying red blood cells, kidney tissue, and sometimes hampering the ability of blood to clot appropriately. Now, these effects can lead to coma and even death eventually. Almost all deaths from brown recluse spiders are recorded, unfortunately, in children. Now, the treatment for spider bites includes washing the area of the bite very thoroughly, applying ice to painful and swollen areas, Pain medications such as acetaminophen are best, enforcing bed rest in those severe cases, and warm baths for those with muscle cramps due to black widow bites, but not for brown recluse bites. Stay away from applying heat to the area of the bite if it's from a brown recluse. Antibiotics also may be useful to prevent a secondary bacterial infection as the skin has been eroded from the toxins in the venom. Home remedies include making a paste out of baking soda or aspirin and applying it to the wound. The same method using olive oil and turmeric in combination is actually a time-honored tradition. Dried basil has also been suggested. You crush it between your fingers until it becomes a fine dust, then apply it to the bite. And one naturopath uses echinacea and vitamin C to speed the healing process. Be aware that these methods may be very variable in their effect from patient to patient. You may get a lot of effect, you may get very little. There are various vacuum devices and kits available that purport to remove venom from bite wounds. Now, unfortunately, these suction devices are generally ineffective in removing a great deal of venom from the wounds. Tourniquets are also not recommended. They could be dangerous, so don't use them. Although antidotes known as antivenins 
exist and may be life-saving for venomous spider and even scorpion stings, these are going to be scarce in the aftermath of a major disaster. Luckily, most cases that are not severe will subside over the course of a few days, like Amy's did. But the sickest patients will be nearly untreatable without the antivenin. Now, brown recluses are relatively new in Florida, but they've been reported frequently recently, usually in the north. In the year 2000 alone, the Florida Poison Control Network recorded nearly 300 alleged cases of brown recluse bites in the state. Having said that, other infections or bites may appear similar, and some doctors feel that the brown recluse is often blamed for reactions that have nothing to do with it. Amy's bite is getting better, but it's important to know that spiders exist and to keep a close eye out for them as you tend to your survival garden. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you need a solid medical kit for the range, for that hunting trip, or for disaster settings, check out Nurse Amy's entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. Thanks again. <music>